My name is Kolo, and I would like to tell you a story about the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security. This story starts with four women who have shaped my life and ensured I didn't turn militant. My mother, who bore me, um, was my first teacher and still is today. My grandmother, home during my long holidays, would welcome me and my siblings, as well as my cousins, and try to domesticate us, not thinking if we were male or female. So I learned to pick beans, peel granites, sweep the compound, wash plates, which I still detest till today. And my godmother, whom, when I was conflicted with my father about letting me travel to volunteer in Liberia, she spoke with him and influenced him to let me go because she said, if he fails tomorrow, he probably would point to this moment and say you were the reason why he couldn't fly. And if you let me, my foster mother, whom in Liberia without doing background checks, let me into our home and gave me a shelter, fed me and never let me go to bed hungry. These women have contributed to the amazing human being that I have become with the experience I've had in international development across agro-livelihood systems contracting taxation for development and very recently in peace and security. While working in peace and security, I managed the project in Bauchi and Benin State. It was an amazing opportunity for me to come to the point of realization that the popular axiom that Nigeria is a conservative society is usually used take away the agency of women and really get them to the back. While working with my teams, I ensured first that it was gendered, meaning that there ought to be balance between male and female on the team. In fact, I ensured that one of the team leads had to be female and the other male. I leave it to your imagination to, know, to think which of the teams performed best. We had a goal to work with 40 women in each of the states to get them to become mediators and peace builders, but also first responders to the local early warning, early response system for conflict within rural communities. These women were amazing women who lived in rural communities, but also have worked at senior CADA across state level. It was an amazing moment working with these women, training them in English and in local languages, and helping them to see that they had been doing something in any way around peace building within their communities. Understanding the work that they have been doing and grasping the concepts made it easier for them to understand that they had the agency and they needed to do more for their communities. Backed by the case study of the Emir of Kaltungo, whom retired now as a civil um, um, aircraft um, pilot, returned home to lead his people and ensured that his traditional council had women on it, especially women who had skills for peace building. It is said that since he assumed his leadership, there have been more successful resolution of conflicts within the Kaltungo Emirates than there have been before. This is to tell you something about the capacity of women in decision making, not only in peace building now, but in socioeconomics, in leadership, in politics, if you like. And so, um, it's disheartening that even has signed uh, the entry to um, the UNSCR 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security, only about 14 states have localized this agenda to provide space for women at national, state, and local levels 
to take decisions as far as peace and security is concerned within their communities. Quite sad that my dear Niger is not one of those. I hope that very soon that communities, women groups, traditional leaders would put pressure on government to ensure that it begins the process, a participatory process of localizing this agenda. When I started the work, I thought it was just going to be a policy at state level and it would end there. But it was amazing to see how people from communities understood the concept, thought how important it was, and were ready to contribute towards they have a document that would guide them as far as peace and security is concerned. And so sometimes I ask, what do we need to do to increase the agency of women? How should our nation building carry women along, not as supporters, but as leaders? And every time I circle back to the five peace factors for which if it is engendered, there would be peace for everyone. First, access to power that women have access to power, access to um, run for office, but also that they have a voice to make demands of office, to make demands and say, we want this, we want that. You are not performing, you need to do better. Access to safety, that women can go to bed with both of their eyes closed, that safe spaces would be provided for women in public spaces, especially in transport, in our transport system, in our markets, and in our societies. Livelihoods, that women have access for skill acquisition, that women have access to education. Little wonder when a man says he's not going to educate his girl child, but when his wife is sick, he goes to the hospital and expects that the doctor who would attend to her would be a woman. If you don't educate your daughters, who then will attend to your wives? It is important that we must think about educations that cater for the girl child. Also, we need to think about women's access to health systems, most importantly, their mental health. It's a known fact that remains um, the deadliest country to be a woman in as far as um, maternal health is concerned. And so it bodes that we need to do more for women's access to first mile health services that cater for their needs, which they do not need to stress and doesn't cost them as much. But we also need to focus on their mental health. Very recently, more women have been speaking up about postpartum depression, which happens to a lot of them when they give birth and they wonder why they are still alive or how they, why they feel the way they feel. Finally, we need to create equitable and just systems that are available, that are accessible to women so that when they have grudges, when they have issues to resolve, they can boldly walk up to these systems and ensure that they get justice. If we put these in place, in as much as we're making them accessible for women, it means that our societies would get better. For you would agree with me that women um, are more amenable to children, women are more amenable um, to social development. Thank you.